Hello, I'm Vilnis Vesma, a specialist in energy management, and in today's Kitchen Tabletop Talk, I'm going to explain the phenomenon of electrical power factor. And I'll start by looking at what everybody, I hope, will recognise a common representation of electrical voltage. Voltage on the vertical axis, time on the horizontal axis, and the classic 50 cycles per second sinusoidal waveform. That's the voltage. If I do this, we can now see that the current that will flow, represented by the red line, goes up and down in phase with the voltage represented by the green line. As far as the power that comes out is concerned, if we multiply the voltage by the current at any instant, we get the wattage. And that's always positive, because a negative times a negative gives a positive. So the blue trace represents the wattage, the power waveform, and the dotted line is the average power that is developed. So that's all uh, well and good. That looks fine, but there are certain types of electrical apparatus, particularly electric motors, which are full of electromagnetic windings. Uh, things like the power supply on the computer and other electrical components which have an adverse effect on the relationship between current and voltage. And this is what they do. They cause the current uh, waveform to lag behind the voltage waveform. So in this picture here, I can displace the current waveform by one uh, twelfth of a cycle, 30 degrees, 30 out of 360 degrees, and you see that the voltage comes up and the current lags behind. Voltage goes down, current lags behind, and the power has a zero result four times every cycle, because either the voltage or the current is zero at those moments. The amplitude has come down and the average power is lower. We can see here that under these conditions, only about 90% of the expected power is delivered by the full current and the full voltage together. If it gets worse, if I experience 40 degrees of lag, now the current is lagging even further behind the voltage, the power waveform is here. The average power has now dropped to about 83%. And to restore the power output, which is the thing that I'm interested in after all, I find I have to increase the current by 20% in order to deliver the required amount of power. Now, another way to visualize that <coughs> is uh, here. And this apparatus that I have uh, built using uh, chopsticks, springs, uh, string and wire. And on this scale here is going to represent the power delivered and the tension in the string measured by this uh, spring balance here will represent the current that's being drawn. And I'm going to start with the current in line with the spring. And I pull down, I'm going to try to deliver 250 kilowatts and I find to deliver 250 kilowatts here on the top scale. Down here, I'm reading a current of 350 amps. Now, supposing I have poor power factor. That is like pulling the string at an angle. Now, because I'm not pulling directly in line with the spring, when I try to deliver 250 kilowatts up here, down here I find the current is not 350 amps, but 450 amps. And that is the crux of the problem with poor power factor, is that it overloads your circuitry and switchgear and so forth. But electrical engineers have a solution. Uh, on this apparatus the solution is uh, this pulley. And if I wrap the string around the pulley and then pull at an angle, here I am trying to develop my 250 kilowatts. Then I find down here 
my current has reverted to the lower value of 350 amps which I had before and it almost doesn't matter in fact it wouldn't matter at all if this were a perfectly frictionless pulley I can pull at any angle and still deliver 250 kilowatts with 350 amps of, of current. The pulley doesn't put any energy into this system and a power factor correction capacitor which is what is fitted in real life in an electrical circuit doesn't do so either. So there we are, that is the phenomenon of an electrical power factor. Thank you very much.